yellow. It is big, big news time today because, of course, yesterday we freed Apollo, which was, you know, pretty cool. But we have the full event schedule for the final Time Rift event finally revealed to us. So we know now how we are going to be getting all of the dragons in the event. And of course, we already know that the event is starting on the 7th of September, but there's going to be two castle events and two divine chests. And in the divine chests, you're actually going to have repeated dragons. So there's a lot of changes that have come this time around, and there's also chances for you to get catch-up pieces in case you ever miss them for some of the dragons. So we'll go through it piece by piece here. Overall, from my initial first thoughts, a lot of this sounds pretty positive, but we'll have to wait and see how the full balancing for the event is. But anyway, the final Time Rift event timeline. So it's come to this. The Tyrants are getting ready to unleash their all-powerful Chrono Divine Dragons onto Dragonlandia, and it's time for Ned and Eliza to once again team up to prevent certain doom from besetting the world. The final Time Rift is the exciting climax of our series of Divine Events bringing together all four of the themes in an epic showdown. So all of the Greek, Norse, Egyptian, and Chinese Divine themes will be returning with a few new Chrono versions of beloved favorites. So the setup of this month-long event will be a little different to our recent Divine Events with two Castle Events and two Divine Chest Events splitting up the final journey to defeat the Tyrants and their Chrono creations. Here is the timeline. So this is going to tell you everything you need to be prepared for and the weeks that things are due to come in. So if you're busy with certain projects and things like that, you can sort of see which weeks might be better for you to play. But usually it's better to just play through the whole month-long event, but, you know, people get busy. But anyway, the final journey, the 7th to the 14th and the 21st to the 28th of September. So the 7th to the 14th week and the 21st to the 28th are the castle event weeks. So if you want to get Chrono Chang, you need to be aware of that. So separated into two parts across two castle events, players can unlock dragons from previous divine events. In part one, the Loki and Valkyrie dragons are the prizes for completing the event, while in part two, you'll be able to unlock the Neza and Bajel Gui dragons for reaching the end. The brand new Chrono Changi dragon is the main prize for this event, however, which is unlocked for collecting the parts inside chests across both of the castle events. Each castle event will have their own event shrine, which will provide additional event currency per day. So, if you want Chrono Changi, you do need to be participating in both sections of this event. However, there are ways to get more pieces for Chrono Chang, and that's actually in the dungeon, if I'm remembering correctly, which is strange. But, you know, we'll get to that in a second, but... This does sound like the Ra Dragon Divine Event for anyone that remembers that way back in the day. We'll see though. So then we've got the Divine Chess. On these two weeks, we'll have Divine Chest Events where you'll be able to collect Divine Tickets to open chests and collect pieces of the Reward Dragons below. Both weeks will have their own Event Shrine, which will provide additional Divine Tickets per day. So, the 14th to the 21st is Part 1 and 28th to the 5th of October is part two of the Divine Chess. And if we go through each dragon in these Divine Chests, you'll notice that they're repeated. So we've got Chrono Osiris in part one, who's obviously a new Divine, the Seth Dragon, which I'll be looking forward to getting, Furnace, Orange Throat, which is a new dragon, Red Talon, and Lilac Horn. So that is part one, the first section of Divine Chess. And then for part two, We've got Chrono Poseidon, the other new Chrono. Uh, Seth is in this again. The Furnace Dragon is in this one again. Razor Helm, which is a new dragon. Then the Glamorous and Runic Dragons. So you'll notice that both Seth and Furnace are repeated in part one and part two. So if you feel like you've missed him in part one, you might have a good shot of getting him the second time around. But in part one, Chrono Osiris and Orange Throat are the unique dragons. And in part two, Chrono Poseidon 
and Razor Helm are the unique dragons, as in the new unique dragons, because we've got Red Talon, Lilac Horn, but you know, they've been here before. So for the new dragons, those are the two uniques for each chest. And then for the bottomless dungeon, throughout the final time rift event, we will have a number of special dungeon events, including unique catch-up dungeons, where there's a chance for the event dragons to appear as rewards inside the chests. So, um, that's interesting. Catch-up dungeons where there's a chance for the event dragons to appear as rewards. Which means if you miss dragons in other parts of the event, you can get them out of the dungeon chests. Interesting. So, 7th to the 14th, we've got a normal bottomless dungeon. From 14th to the 21st, we have a divine dungeon with divine tickets available. 21st to the 28th, we have a catch-up dungeon. So there's going to be Orange Throat, Red Talon, and Lilac Corn Dragons available to find inside the chest. Chrono Osiris Dragon parts can also appear in the final repeatable chest. So, again, if you miss out on the Divine chest dragons there are pieces for them here and then we've got from the 28th of september to the 5th of october a divine catch-up dungeon again with divine tickets available in each chest additionally pe or the orange throat red talent and lilac corn dragons will be available to find again and chrono osiris and chrono changi dragon parts can appear in the final repeatable chest and then from the 5th to the 12th of October, the final catch-up with the chance to find all of the event dragons inside the dungeon chess. So, dungeon is actually going to become a very important part of this event. This time around is what I'm guessing as a catch-up dungeon to get the remaining pieces that you don't have. So, um, I know some of us don't like the dungeon. But if you've got an acceptance wonder sort of team comp going, you're going to be doing fine that week, or those weeks. Then of course, from the 7th of September to the 5th of October, we have the Dragon Master Pass, which has our wonderful boy Apollo within it. So certain events during the final time rift will also earn you season points to unlock fantastic rewards. Among these will be the fabled Apollo Dragon, finally freed from the depths of Dragon Olympus. All players will be able to unlock the Apollo Dragon, though those who purchase the Premium Pass will be able to add the Divine Harpist to their collection quicker. So Apollo is going to appear in the Dragon Master Pass at the 8,000 point milestone, and I've heard that common dragons are going to count towards that Dragon Master Pass again, which means technically we might be able to get Apollo within a couple of days of the Dragon Master Pass being released. But you can get Apollo free to play for the free part of the pass at 8,000 points. But if you want to buy the premium pass version, you'll unlock him faster and you can actually unlock a second one, a second Apollo Dragon if you buy the premium pass. So you can get two Apollo Dragons for buying the pass, but he is a free-to-play acquirable dragon. Very, very cool. So, then obviously towards the end of this we have the collection event, which goes throughout the entire duration of the event. So collect each of the event's main reward dragons to add the ultimate Kronos Dragon to your collection. The required dragons are Chrono Changi from the Castle event, Chrono Osiris from the Divine Chess 1, Chrono Poseidon from Divine Chest 2, and Apollo from the Dragon Master Pass. So you do actually need to get Apollo to um, get Ultimate Kronos, so don't forget about that. So then we also have 14th to the 21st, a boss challenge. Defeat the Celestial Bosses and complete laps to earn Divine Tickets and unlock the Priestess Dragon. So it looks like we can actually get Divine Tickets from the boss challenge again. Hopefully that gives a big chunk, because this used to be like one of the main ways that we used to get lots of divine tickets, along with the dungeon. So we'll see. Then the 28th to the 5th, a solo event, so win divine tickets from the milestone rewards and claim the final prize, Kelp. And then, of course, we also have our regular weekend events throughout the month, where you can either 
earn season points for the Dragon Master Pass weeks one and three or divine tickets weeks two and four. So be sure to take part in those. So this is giving us the chance to earn divine tickets and also season points so that you can get Apollo a lot easier and all the other rewards in it. So that is the full schedule for what you should expect for the next month. Of course, Windows players at the moment, we are waiting for the new update. Otherwise, we're not going to get this event. So I'm um, pretty pleased, praying that they fix the, the issues with Windows players getting this because I'm also a Windows player. A Windows player, obviously. I'm on my desktop right now. Um, and it would suck for us not to be able to take part. So um, all that we could do is hope that they can resolve whatever issues it is that they're dealing with. But... Apollo is coming, Chrono Changi is coming, Chrono Osiris and Chrono Poseidon are coming and Ultimate Chronos being that final main reward. But we do have a free to play dragon. Changi is also going to be a free to play dragon. And the Divine Chests, depending on how they are balanced, could be free to play. Um, obviously the Divine Chests that we've had before have never been free to play friendly. You just have to get insanely lucky. But... Depending on how this is all balanced, I don't know. If it's done well, we could technically, realistically see dedicated players actually getting every major event dragging out of this, but I'm not sure which ones are supposed to be the pay-to-win dragons, if there are any. So, um, the main thing, now that we have this, is just knowing what the numbers actually are on, you know, how likely are we to get pieces for the dragons out of the divine chest, uh, you know, how likely are we to get pieces from the catch-up dungeon, the actual numbers are gonna be the big, big deciding factor on how successful this event is, and plus with castle events being a part two, or a two-part castle event, have we gone back? To the old version of castle events that don't rely on key RNG because if we've gone back to that I can I can see myself maybe actually enjoying this set of events for like the first time ever obviously with Apollo being free I'm on a pretty big high as it is but if we keep seeing positive changes all of these like you know additional catch-up dungeons chances to get extra dragons outside of the divine chest We've got chances to get pieces for Changi and things like that in the dungeon chest. You know, that's great for people that miss out on parts of the event because they're busy or maybe like one of the weeks they're busy doing something else. So um, overall, I'm optimistic, but that could that could fade quickly depending on how it's balanced. So um, Game Loft, you've, um, you've appeased me for now, but I do hope to see um, good numbers on this event. It is the final time rift after all. Give us give us a good event to end this time rift shenanigan stuff on. And I'm still excited to see what's coming after this time rift stuff because, you know, it's the end of the time rifts, but that would mean a new set of divine events coming. And I guess that would mean a whole different style of event. So I am, um, I'm interested I'm curious to see how it goes, but, you know, in the meantime, Windows players, I've seen your complaints on here, um, we get it. I have also seen that in, I believe it's this thread, um, Adam was actually talking about the fact that sigils will not be on opponent dragons during the castle event, so if we're going to be taking the sigils off to make it fairer for everyone, that would also be fantastic. I mean, they've got another week to sort of, you know, work out all of the balancing for that. So, um, that is another good thing. A lot of people will be happy to hear that sigils have essentially been taken out of the equation for this, but it leaves a lot to be... I want to know. I just want to know the numbers. I want to know the numbers now. <laughs> I just want to know Game Loft. But anyway, that is the full event schedule. Let me know what you think. Um, I'm curious to see what your thoughts are based on all of this information. And, um, you know, I will say again, thank you to everyone that joined our stream yesterday. We do have a, a, a short clip up of the new, um, or of the stream, because the stream was like 
over two hours long and we got Apollo freed, but people seemed quite confused as to how Apollo is being released. He is going to be free to play. You can get him free to play. You don't have to spend money on the Dragon Master premium pass to get him. 8,000 points. If we can, in fact, keep hatching fire dragon eggs, you can do that in a couple of days. So, um, again, he is free to play. He will be acquirable free to play. I can't wait to see everyone with their own Apollo dragons. Let's just have an Apollo army at this point. I'm looking forward to it. But that's how you get Apollo. If you do have any other questions or for some reason you're still confused, you know, leave a comment, join the Discord server. But overall, he is free to play. You can get him from next week. Assuming Windows actually gets the update. <laughs> anyway, thank you for joining me. That is it for now. Um, I'll look out for any more info and update you if we do get any. But thank you for joining me. And until the next time I see you, have fun.